Welcome to the third video in our series on GTFS Fares version 2. In this video, we will be using a fictional transit agency as an example for how to represent a simple fare structure within GTFS Fares. We'll be covering some of the most common files and fields in order to understand how the specification is used in practice. In later videos, I'll show some more advanced examples, such as how to handle different fares for premium and local routes, and how to represent peak and off-peak fares. Let's start with our cool new agency, CatCat. -Cat. They have a pretty simple fare structure. All routes have the same flat fare, although the cash rate is more expensive than paying with a mobile app or contactless payment card. They also have a discount fare group, which I just want to note, we can't actually represent in GTFS Fares v2 as of this moment, although it's expected to be adopted soon. As always, check on gtfs.org for the most up-to-date information. So let's go into our empty template in Google Sheets. The first sheet I have open is Fair Media, and that seems like a great place to start. CatCat -Cat accepts cash, contactless, and mobile app payments. We'll want to represent all of those, especially since the cash fare is higher. I also have the reference from gtfs.org open in another tab so it's easy to check each field and make sure we're doing it correctly. The Fair Media ID is just something used in the data to select the Fair Media. It won't be shown to the customer or rider. I like to pick something simple and memorable. Here, let's start with cash. The Fair Media name is the customer facing name. I'll also call it cash here. Fair Media type is an enum, which just means that it is a numerical ID selected from a pre defined list. I like to double check the spec for this one. See? Here are our options for Fair Media type. The possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and four. The spec describes what each option means. We'll want to use zero, since that is none, which is to say cash. I'll just go ahead and quickly fill in the other two types of fare media, contactless and mobile app. For the mobile app, I will use its actual name here, if it has one. And going back to the spec, we can see that mobile is a type four. Same deal for contactless, only this is a type three, great. Now we are moving right along to FAIR products. Open the next tab. This part may seem a little tricky if you aren't used to editing structured data like this, but I promise it's actually quite simple. We have a single one-way FAIR that we're trying to represent, but we need a separate FAIR product entry for each FAIR media as well. First, we'll start with the ID. It's a one-way trip, so that seems like a good identifier. For the first row, let's do cash. Here, we have to use the same fair media ID that we created in the other sheet. Now, for amount and currency, I'm going to turn back to the spec. One of the most important things is to make sure everything is in the right format. When I go down to the entry for fair products, you can see that there is also a column here for type. In the left-hand navigation, there's a link to field types. Let's remember these before we click currency amount and currency code. Great, here's a description with links for more information. Currency code links to a wiki page. I happen to already know that US dollars is just USD, but you could click here to look up the correct code if you need to. Currency amount is a little more verbose. Basically, some currency types have a different number of decimal places defined, although most use two. US and Canadian dollars both use two decimal places. You'll want to enter the fare amount without any type of dollar sign or anything like that. Here we go. Now we repeat that process for mobile app fare media, as well as contactless, remembering that the fare is lower. I'm reusing the fare product ID, because all of these fare products are used in the same network. They are all one-way fares, valid on all routes, the same between all stops and during all time frames. But there's still one fare product missing. Can you figure out what it is? The free transfer is a type of fare product. Anything with a fare amount, even a free fare, is a fare product. Let's move on to fare leg rules. For a flat rate fare network, this is going to be really simple. Like in the other files, the leg group ID is just used to identify and group data within the spec. 
when there is only one group of fares or when the majority of the system uses the same fare structure, I like to call that leg group default. For CatCat, we can ignore most of these columns. All we're going to do is enter the fare product that is valid on this network, which is the entire root network. So, one way goes here. That's it. We're done with fair leg rules already. Finally, fair transfer rules is the last file we'll need to represent all of the fares for CatCat. This is another file where it can be useful to have the official GTFS spec handy. We only have one leg group, so this part is simple. Default to default. Now, here are a few less obvious columns. Let's go look at the spec. Okay, there's a lot more information here. Scrolling down to transfer count. Here we are. In this case, transfer count is required because the from leg group ID is the same as the to leg group ID, which is to say, we're transferring within the same leg group. CatCat has unlimited transfers in a two hour window, so we'll want to use the value negative one. The next field is duration limit. This is the number of seconds that the transfer is valid. Since I've been doing a lot of this work, I happen to know off the top of my head now that there are 7,200 seconds in two hours. Duration limit type is another enum. I didn't explicitly write this out in my description for CatCat, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that the two hour limit applies between the departure validation of the current leg and the departure fair validation of the next leg. So, one. Fair transfer type is a similar enum. I won't go through each of these options, but the description in the spec covers them in more detail. For CatCat, we'll want option zero. This calculates the cost of the trip as the first fair leg amount plus the transfer amount. Finally, we add the fair product ID for our free transfer, and we're done. Great work. You've just learned the basics of fares v2. In the following video, I'll show you how to export each of these sheets as a properly formatted file and add it to your GTFS feed. Later videos will cover special cases for more complicated fare structures. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.